Welcome to Namaste Today, a calming way to begin your day. I'm your heartfelt host and the sensei to serious joy, Christopher Witecki. This audio broadcast is for Thursday, June 8th, 2017. Welcome to the grand full moon. Namaste. Today we are 24 hours away from a fantastic full moon in Sagittarius. And really, even though the full moon is technically early tomorrow morning, I predict you'll be emotional and moody today. In today's Zodiac weather, I'll talk about the planets lining up to step two. And later in your tea time, this full moon is not just about faith versus the facts. It's about clearing some fear. But first, let's take a look at today's moods and your Zodiac weather. This Zodiac weather is for Thursday, June 8th, 2017. And my global prediction for Planet Gaia is sunny and passionate today. Step 18 rules the day and the upcoming full moon. And a full moon in Sagittarius strums the story you were born to live. Let's take a look at the planets. As we wake up today, things begin calm and serene. Step 17 will be the ruling step that we wake up to, but it's not there shortly after that step 18 rules the day. Step 18 is an action-based step. It nets to 9, which is Aries. And what it means is you are ready to decide and commit to a certain direction. The only issue is your feelings, which is sometimes the opposite of our thoughts, may agree or disagree. And so today, it's going to be an action-packed and passionate day where you are emotionally determining whether or not you can stand behind this said commitment. The full moon is transiting in Sagittarius, which is also where Saturn happens to be later in the transit at step 25. In Sagittarius, we are all getting serious, that Saturn, about the story we were born to live, which is the galactic center. And today, emotionally, this is not just a debate between our beliefs, Sagittarius, and our thoughts, Gemini. This is a philosophical exploration about whether or not we are on our path. So today you may go through a full rainbow of emotional colors as you emotionally explore whether or not you feel your newfound Gemini decisions and ideas actually make sense to the rest of your soul. And amping up that emotion beyond the full moon actually is the planet of Mars and the planet of Venus. First of all, Venus is at step two Taurus today. Step two is I feel. Venus is I receive. So today you are receiving lots of feelings, in other words, very emotional, very emotionally sensitive about what it is you're manifesting, which is Taurus. So part of the emotion today may be your feelings about something you intend to manifest and perhaps questioning for the last time, I may say, whether or not you feel this is possible. With the moon in Sagittarius, not only are you asking yourself if you feel it's possible to manifest this, but you may be asking yourself, do you really feel this is part of your story? Do you really feel this is the story you were born to live? In other words, does this feel right to me? So emotions are amped up on that level. But also Mars, which is our ego aggression, is in step two also, I feel, of the sign Cancer, the ruler of step two. This puts an enormous amount of ego pressure on our emotions and pushes us, literally pushing our emotions to move forward. Now, I'll have to post a little warning here because this sort of emotional pressure with Venus at step two and Mars in step two is really the astrological setup to do some heavy emotional purging. So if you have been denying emotions to yourself, such as your love for someone, or perhaps denying emotions about being upset about someone, or perhaps being upset about the loss of someone, any repressed emotion today could spew out of you like a geyser. And since the sun is in Gemini, this is one of those days where loose lips will sink ships, people will probably say too much, 
but it's probably something that was long overdue to be said anyways. So today is going to be a passionate day, and I imagine even the healthiest person is going to probably have to purge a little bit of stress and anxiety that they've been experiencing at least for the last uh, 30 days, if not six months. Now, speaking to the big picture and the full moon in Sagittarius, we are six months away from the last time we explored Sagittarius. The sun was in Sagittarius last year in November. And at that time, everyone got quite serious about turning their life around and trying to point to the real meaning and purpose of their life, which I like to call the story you were born to live. Ironically, This all happened right after the President Trump election, and so just national politics alone probably made people turn inward and ask, oh geez, what are we going to do now with this going on? Well, this moment in the next 24 hours really marks the halfway point to the next time we go back into Sagittarius. We're now six months from the point where you turn back toward the story you're about to live, and this full moon really is an emotional analysis as to whether you feel things are going correctly or not. It may also be an emotional analysis about you making a major turn in your story. Perhaps after the first chapter of your story was laid out here in the last six months, you've realized it's time to make a change. Or perhaps you've realized you need to go back and re-explore something you would once live. Saturn is, after all, retrograde until late August. But even though we're going back and forth about whether or not we are on our path, the North Node in Leo says, indeed we are. The North Node in Leo is now at step 26 Leo. And this step is a step where we make a commitment to a heartfelt vision that our heart really wants. So all this jibber-jabber in our mind with facts versus philosophy and whether or not we're on the story we were born to live is all going to play into manifesting something we want. And this time with the North Node in Leo, this is in fact something you will manifest. So this is an important dialogue that we have going on within us today. The other long-term story that this is fulfilling is Uranus at Step 27 Aries, the Grand Master Degree of Aries which means we are all right now considering whether to go for or not go for a higher vision of ourself, Aries, or a higher achievement in our lives, which is also Aries. It's action and character. So there's a lot of philosophy going back and forth, and really the winner and losers come down to our thoughts versus our feelings. The sun in Gemini is what we have been thinking so far, but in this next 24 hours, it's what the rest of your soul feels about it. So my advice, friends, is to do your processing and go to sleep clear on what you believe and what you feel, because the full moon will apex early tomorrow morning, and it will almost be the signing or endorsing of your emotional philosophy, not really the actual opposition. Most of the typical full moon behavior you will likely see today in your daily work life and see particularly tonight in whatever you do. That's because tonight the moon will cross old black Lilith and we will have to emotionally face a fear before we have this full moon. And that brings me to today's Tea Time topic. We're going to be clearing some major fears. So go steep yourself some tea, and let's have our daily Tea Time. Hello, my friend, and welcome to our Tea Time. Today's Tea Time topic is Clearing Fear. And a full moon is a big clearing, by the way. Whenever the moon gets full, our emotions become at their max. And as a result, just like a thunderstorm, we often do a release. We kind of wring out our emotional tension. And I think this is part of God's way of massaging us spiritually just through Mother Nature and the cycles of the moon, of which, as we know, women are directly tied to with their own estrogen cycles every 28 days. So we're on a normal cycle to do some clearing. This particular clearing in the next 24 hours will also involve our emotional fears. That's because tonight, before you go to bed, the moon will cross old black Lilith. 
She is in Sagittarius, and she has been forcing us to face our fears when it comes to the story we were born to live, or face our fears around our beliefs about who we are and what brings us purpose, our own collective consciousness. Now, I believe there's actually two types of fears that humans deal with. There is fear of the unknown, and there is fear of the once known. Fear of the unknown often comes from the idea of uh, being alerted to a possibility in life, such as car accidents are a possibility, and getting killed is a possibility if you don't wear your seatbelt. And fear of the unknown would be, oh gosh, will that happen to me? I don't know. I don't want that happen to me. And so you have some sort of unknown that you emotionally have to face fear with. I would say that if Black Lilith was in Gemini, then we would probably do a lot of fear of the unknown purging right now. We get rid of those sorts of fears. I think, though, that because Black Lilith is in Sagittarius, we are purging fears of the once known. Sagittarius is our belief structure, but it's my belief, and as a religious philosopher here who studies spirituality, that embedded in our beliefs, which is how we are raised, uh, the issues we had up until age 30, all these primary experiences that we have, these all include not just this lifetime's information, but also part of your entire multi-lifetime journey. That's why the galactic center is in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the consciousness that holds all of the Akashic records, in my opinion. In fact, I've once joked that it is perhaps what Jupiter really is. Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system, and it actually may be where the Akashic records are consciously stored. Just a theory, but I do believe they go hand in hand. So with the moon in Sagittarius and the moon full in Sagittarius, which means this is the full volume of the emotion that we will get in a given year, we will face many of our Akashic record and past lifetime fears. That's what I mean by the once known. Anything you experienced in this life, particularly up until age 30, was in my opinion a recreation of a past life scenario put in simple terms where you most likely overcome, but depending on the past life, you may not have overcome. And so this early uh, lifetime experience up until 30 really does put into our hard-coded biology some themes that we have in our life and some fears that we may have in our life. But I argue that we had those experiences because we lived entire lifetimes where this was the story and this played out. And so the point is, is the emotional energy around certain topics doesn't just echo in our bones. It echoes in our multi-lifetimes. It's some deep-seated fear. So as the full moon climbs step by step through the day today... All the way up to the climax of the full moon, step 18, tomorrow morning. As we face each step, you will face all of your multi-lifetime fears, or at least smell them, depending on how deep they are. I imagine if it's a minor fear, you'll just kind of have like a, a moment in the car. But if it's a huge fear that your soul has been dealing with lifetime over lifetime over lifetime, it could put you into a small paralysis, at least until the moon moves to the next step and moves on to the next fear. And by the way, the next step would probably be what your soul did right after that fear happened. Okay, so our stories kind of go along the step numbers when it comes to Sagittarius. The point is, is today's a very passionate day, and many people will be doing their annual fear purging because the full moon is in Sagittarius along with Black Lilith. And Black Lilith is at step 12, which is the bridge. She's almost to step 13. It'll be here in the next uh, couple days where she goes to step 13 and there's a breakthrough. But step 12 is the emotional bridge. And I believe the emotional bridge is we emotionally let this fear go once and forever. And that's really how you deal with it. Someone asked me, how do you deal with these types of fears that overtake us out of nowhere? What do we do when our life shuts down in that moment with that very heavy energy? And the answer is, you simply nurture yourself. Basically, your soul is trembling from a number of lifetimes and situations where it has gotten hurt. And so the only way to remedy the situation 
is to go through that fear, stay with yourself through that fear, nurture yourself through that fear, and show your soul and your soul's history that that may have happened before, but it's not happening now. It's kind of like if a dog is always spanked with a newspaper every morning and suddenly the newspaper is put down, yeah, the dog is freaked out every time it sees the newspaper. What's going to heal that dog? Day after day, the newspaper must come and no harm should be done to the dog. It should know that this is not going to be a harm anymore. We're like little doggies too in our inner soul. We are trembling from certain situations. And the reason why we're still trembling from these situations and having these fears is because when they have come, we haven't been prepared as light walkers to face them from a calm, cool, and healed perspective. We didn't have the belief structure or the support uh, there at that moment. And even myself, I have to say, I am not exempt just because I understand philosophically how this stuff works. I'm actually bringing this topic up because I've been facing my multi-lifetime fears. I've been feeling uh, the fears of my own karma come up, and things are just fine in my present life. There's no reason to be concerned. And I can feel, wow, this is probably the first life, which is what enlightenment is about in this lifetime. This is probably the first life that I have, instead of freaking out, instead of running to the pub on my horse and getting drunk, you know what I mean, like whatever I did in past lives, in this life, I just sat with myself and I, and I reassured myself that that might have been the past, uh, but this is a fear of what was once known and it is something that we will not know in the future. We have experienced this story. The cycle is complete, okay? And I think the fear cycle is complete when the old fear comes back and you don't let it hurt you. That's really when the final echo vibration of karmic fear is complete, all right? So a lot of us might be doing some of that today. A lot of you might be facing a lot of deep fears, a lot of issues. It often comes up as anxiety for those who don't pay attention, restlessness uh, for those who don't ask their soul these questions, sleeplessness for those who quite often ignore these issues during the day. The energy just comes up and gets in your face, and you can cure it, in my opinion, once and for all, as long as your own personal response is is to add love, add light, and add self-nurturing to the situation. To me, this is what Black Lilith means at step 12, that we have an emotional bridge to cross. And that emotional bridge from a long-term, multi-lifetime perspective is, we may have had many bad things happen to us on Earth, in our early life here on Earth, or in our past life memories. But I am awake now. And I am aware that I am manifesting my reality. And I choose not to succumb to these fears, but rather to continue down the path and see what happens after I pass this fear, walk past this open window, walk past my enemy or greatest dark shadow with no harm. What's in the story after the hero faces the villain? That's the question we all want to answer, and all we have to do, in my opinion, is self-nurture ourselves across this emotional bridge of unknown and this emotional bridge of once known. And what's on the other side of this bridge is a peaceful mind, because we are in a full moon opposing the sun in Gemini. This will give us a peace of mind. This will allow our thoughts to not uh, fester on these topics, repeat these topics, and get nutty about these topics inside ourselves, but rather to be able to dismiss them because we emotionally faced the situation, we got through it, chances are we could do it again. All right, my friend, well, have a happy full moon to you. Go ahead and release those fears, release any pent up emotions. And tomorrow when you wake up, that's actually when the release will happen. So by going to sleep tonight with the intention of wanting to let certain things go, at that point, you just let the universe do its job. You let Mother Earth do her job. The rains will come and wash those things away, okay? And remember, while you're out there doing your emotional clearing, I am here covering your astro. 
That's my old little saying when I first got started. And I'd say it is true. I'm here to love you and cover your astro while you're out there fighting the good fight. Have a wonderful 24 hours. Remember that I love you and to live, love, be. Live.